tina koto katoa, a kamahi a hau ki tina finua, ki tina moana miana uri. Um, ko Zoe Fat to koingwa, um, he kai fa kahari a hau iti mountains to see iti upuku iti ka Maui. Um, a kamahi a hau ki a koto mo tina kau papa iti nei wa. Uh, Noreira, tina koto. Um, kia ora koutou, it is, um, I just want to acknowledge first this land, this ocean um, and all of its descendants. My name is Zoe Studd, you've already introduced me, I'm from Mountains to Sea Wellington, um, I'm the co-founder and co-director um, and uh, we're obviously in Te Opoko Te Maui and the head of the fish um, and we've been working there for about 14 years um, and really working, as Claire said, in this education and connection space. Um, but we've also supported uh, restoration projects, citizen science, a whole lot of community endeavours. Um, and then my notes are just coming up, so I'm going to do it here. About 18 months ago, we decided that we would become seaweed farmers as well. And then we were like, well, how do we do that? We had no idea. Can everyone hear me all right? Sorry, I'm not sending this to the microphone. So um, then we were like, well, how are we going to go about doing that? So what I'd like to do today is just to share a little bit of our journey and how we ended up here, because it's pretty exciting, I think, um, what you were all about. That's going to slip off. Nope. Alrighty. Um, so I'm changing there, but I'm not changing there. Here we go. Awesome. So the lovely Murimu Restoration Project, um, so it's community-led, so the Regeneration Project has come from young people and from communities working in Te Opoko e Tika Maui. Um, it's our mission to try and regenerate our underwater forests um, and to restore the basis of those healthy coastal ecosystems, which we all know are in, um, in degradation. So we want to help build knowledge and we want to collaborate really widely with others in that journey. We want to accelerate um, the knowledge for regeneration and we know that through that, we're also going to help accelerate what people want to do in the commercial sector as well, because our knowledge will be out there and willingly shared. Um, and as I've already said, you know, collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Um, we are open source. We are guided by mana whenua, um, particularly in where they want to see regeneration and what kind of regeneration and what species are important to them. And biodiversity and climate solutions are at the heart of what we want to do. And I just want to acknowledge um, all the collaborators who had been a part of it. NIWA, um, Wellington University, they supported us when we had no resources and it's amazing what people will do for a non-profit organisation. Um, so they were amazing, they got us underway. Um, and the Wellington community and all the groups that are working in that space as well. Oh, she's doing the same thing again. So if I keep talking, <laughs> and this hasn't changed. Um, so currently what's going on in Wellington Harbour is this. You know, we've got this change from these um, these giant Rimuri forests that we had in the past and the flip to ecosystems that are highly degraded and impacted. Um, and this isn't just a Wellington problem, this is right across New Zealand, but it's also global. And our seaweed forests are in decline. You know, um, there's big swathes in Tasmania and California, and every time we lose a seaweed forest, we lose all those other ecosystem benefits and everything that's associated with it as well. So um, there are lots of different drivers and in Wellington we're struggling with things like sedimentation, water quality, um, overfishing which is allowing kinna numbers to explode as well um, and also climate change and those drivers um, as we see changes in sea surface temperatures um, and increased storm surges and all those kinds of other stresses as well. So um, there are lots of missing pieces to our knowledge um, but some things are clear when you go underwater and you see what's happening. So one of the challenges that we've run into, is how do you go about restoring a forest that is out of sight for most people and that most people don't actually spend much time engaging with? Um, and I love this diagram, thank you, but I like it, um, because it really demonstrates that regeneration needs to have this whole catchment approach so when we see a forest disappear, that's really obvious to us. Our emu forests are gone and everything that's associated with it, all the birds, insects. But in our marine forest, we don't, but we're just as important. So when we think about a, a restoration project for seaweed, we think rimu forest to rimu rimu forest. And we probably should think a little bit higher and lower than that as well. 
Um, and one of our great joys is that it's, you know, sharing with people the diversity that can be found in a Limu Limu forest as well. Um, so we work whole catchment, so we do freshwater work as well. Um, we think about balance, so what's the whole picture first and foremost? What's, the, what's happening in that whole system? People need to be in the picture for regeneration and diversity and resilience is one of those really cool foundations. You know, we can't think single species. Um, we can't repeat some of the mistakes we've made on land in the marine environment as well. So we think that there is a really um, a great collaboration between regeneration and utilisation that I'd invite you guys to have, you know, conversation or come and have a chat with me about as well. Um, I won't go into too much of this, um, but obviously I'm preaching to a room of the converted. Seaweed's awesome stuff, but why doesn't everybody think so? So um, we went on a bit of a campaign to help encourage our community to love Rimu Rimu. And uh, as Claire mentioned, we run education programs and about three years ago we began a program called Love Rimu Rimu. Uh, and this was a huge amount of fun and a beginning of a lot of journey, a learning journey for us as well. So we were taking kids out snorkeling in their local seaweed forest, learning about diversity. I've got some beautiful guides and things I'm really happy to share with people as well. Um, we had cocktail evenings where we drank seaweed. We had community snorkel days when we invited seaweed experts down to talk to people who were jumping in the water. That was really cool. They were like, we didn't actually think people were going to be that interested in seaweed, but they really were. Um, and, you know, some beautiful T-shirts and other opportunities to engage. And we're always looking for more collaborations like that because we think the more people are thinking about seaweeds, the more they're thinking about what's going on inside our harbour as well. So um, I just wanted to share a little bit of this journey because I think this is um, particularly special. So this is um, one of our students. The first year that we ran the education programme, Love Rimu Rimu, we partnered with an organisation, Te Aho Tūrua, and we delivered in Kura Kaupapa Māori and in uh, uh, English medium schools and developed a whole lot of tools and resources and invited experts in to work with us for a whole year. Um, and from it, these students actually just, they just they were out, they were snorkeling, they were developing all of this knowledge. Um, and they were the first ones to actually come up with a plan for regeneration in the harbour, which they presented back to Taranaki Wānui and said, this is where we think regeneration should take place. These are the kinds of species you should be thinking about. Um, and so from that sea, we went, no problem, we'll help you do that. And then we started trying to figure out how to do that. And that took us uh, on a much bigger journey because we didn't realise, though you guys probably already have been in this space, just how much it takes to grow a seaweed and, you know, the lack of information that there was out there for us to get started. Um, so at the moment, I'm very proud to say that we have got quite a few things underway. So we're a year in, about a bit of, about a year and a half in, um, and we've been learning a huge amount in the hatchery process. So this is us out, you know, collecting spores, um, working with Dr. Roberta Da Chino, who's been a mentor to the project from the get go, um, learning how to extract those spores. They're doing quite a lot of research now, trying to figure out how they can speed up some of that extraction, what kinds of things they like fettling on. We're focusing with Macrocystis first because Wellington is the northernmost extent of those giant kelp forests. And we know that, um, you know, we need to make sure that population is resilient as possible so that we'll be there into the future. Um, but we will move into other species because we don't want to end up in that single species box just going Macrocystis is the only thing that could possibly be, re be regenerated here. Um, and we've got some different um, growth mediums that we're trying out here. Some of these are on strings. And, um, and the middle here is this little picture is a picture of um, a restoration technique called green gravel. So you actually um, you seed onto rocks and then those rocks go back out into the marine environment. We haven't yet had the guts to throw them out to the kinners. So at the moment they're still like, you know, suspended off the bottom. Um, and these are some of our tribal um, seaweeds as well. So our first Mac with sisters went in about uh, in June this year, and some of them are now already a metre long. So they've sustained some really bad weather and some really unpleasant um, winter conditions, and as I understand, some pretty unpleasant conditions out monitoring on the raft as well. 
Um, but yeah, they're doing well and our green gravel is out there too. So all of this um, is kind of helping us to learn a bit more about what we need to do to get our regeneration project underway. But there's a huge amount of knowledge that's building that we want to share and make and make available to other people as well. So working with Taranaki Wānui, they're going to begin a program around sort of gathering mātauranga. You know, looking at original names tells you a huge amount about what used to be in a place and what kinds of species um, were, were um, thriving in those areas. Our aquaculture techniques, there's research going on at um, Victoria University looking at the climate resilience of some of these different species. Um, and just building a picture for what's going on in our harbour, the baseline surveys, um, and that means involving lots of young people and citizen sciences, scientists in that project as well. Um, for us, in terms of what's next, um, like many of you, we are ready to start growing at a, a greater scale, but we've got a lot of groundwork to do to understand whether we need more consents um, and what's going to be possible in that regeneration space in the harbour. So we are aiming to try and get three to four new regeneration sites in by next winter, and that's going to include a bit of a scale-up of our hatchery and our nursery. Um, we're going to continue to collaborate, and anyone who is interested to have a conversation about that, um, very keen to. Um, we are working on developing up a regeneration toolkit, and we think that's going to have a lot of um, information in there that's going to be beneficial for lots of different people, not just people operating in regeneration. Um, I've talked about this idea of regeneration and utilisation working hand in hand, but I really encourage you, if you're in business, to think about how you might also support um, endeavours, local endeavours, to protect and restore, restore seaweed forests in your local area as well. That's only going to be of benefit to the work that you're trying to do. Um, and education and training. So obviously um, the education program is something we continue to do. Um, but we are now trying to expand that out nationally. Um, and I know that next year, if we're successful with some funding, there'll be work going on here in Nelson. Um, so I encourage you to get amongst that. And those young people engaged in those projects are your young innovators and your young seaweed growers for the future as well. Um, and I'd love to see more internships, training, um, community science taking place in the seaweed space as well. Uh, to just to empathise some of the businesses that have supported us, off the call of the sea you know, you can become a friend too, that's my plug. And um, if you've got any questions or you want to have a chat, please get in touch.